Okay, hello everyone. Today we are going to be talking about Pushkin's poem called Yedny Sadnik in Russian. Um, or in English, it's translated as the bronze horseman. Uh, and so in order to understand this poem, we're going to go into history a little bit. The bronze horseman is a specific statue in St. Petersburg. And so we're going to take a minute to look at that statue. Let's see if I can figure this out. There we go. So, um, the bronze horseman is right back here. It's down right as you're getting down towards the water. Um, like going down to the Neva River. It's right there by the Winter Palace, as you can see in the back. And it's this statue. So that is a statue of Peter the Great. If you don't know who Peter the Great is, we'll take a minute and talk about him because he's one of my most favorite people or characters in <laughs> Russian history. So this statue, as you can see right here, it was erected by Catherine the Great. I think it was in maybe like 17... 1772 or something. I don't know the exact date. Um, so Peter the Great lived more in the 17th century and I think died in something like 1705 or I don't know, my dates could be totally off. But um, so then Catherine the Great created this monument for Peter and it's considered quite a feat of engineering. It's pretty crazy that it has held up as well considering how much weight is balanced on just these back legs. So yet another like representation of what Peter the Great is like. He's, you know, he's almost larger than life, did amazing things. So here's Peter the Great. Peter the Great, I think if you're going to only learn about one person in Russian history, it needs to be Peter the Great. Peter the Great did more for Russia and changed Russia into kind of what it is today. The Russia that you see today is what it is because of Peter the Great. He's actually, if I could go back in time and have a coffee with any person in history, it would be Peter the Great. This is one of my most favorite books I've ever read. I highly recommend it. It's the biography of Peter the Great by Robert Massey. It's amazing. He's a very fascinating human being. Um, he would just teach himself anything he wanted to learn taught himself languages, taught himself to build ships, taught himself to be a dentist, taught himself to be a doctor. And then he traveled all throughout Europe. And he really wanted Russia to be uh, less medieval, kind of, and more European. And so he goes on a tour of Europe to try and think, okay, how can I make my country more like Europe? Um, so this poem is Peter the Great's very much at the center of it. Like Peter the Great is not the character necessarily. It's another guy, um, but it's it's kind of an ode. It's dedicated to St. Petersburg, the city St. Petersburg. And then you obviously can't know, you can't learn about St. Petersburg without also learning about Peter the Great. So um, go ahead and, and text me in the comments if you've been to St. Petersburg, if you're from St. Petersburg, what impressed you about St. Petersburg if you've been there? Um, yes, so I, it's if you love Russian literature, St. Petersburg is a pretty amazing place to be. And this poem, we're going to read the beginning of the poem of the story, which is a big kind of a love letter to St. Petersburg. So we're going to talk about that. Um, okay, so let's get some of the history behind it. So Catherine the Great erected this monument to Peter the Great, and that's called the Mjenev Sadnik, the Bronze Horseman. So this poem is in Pushkin's time. Pushkin lived from about 1799 until 1836. And so he would have, this would have been present in his St. Petersburg that he lived in. He would have seen this statue on a regular basis. Um, so this poem starts out, на берегу пустынных волн стоял он дум великих пон и вдаль глядел. Okay, so on the shore of the deserted waves stood he, St. Peter, or it's not St. Peter, Peter the Great, full of deep thoughts. We're not going to go too much in depth on the grammar and these little things. I'm just kind of giving you the, the um, 
the concept behind everything. Um, Dobry vecher o nas dva, Sergeja, kažica. So, Dobry vecher, Sergejam. Uh, so, there's St. The, Peter, the, Peter the Great. At this point, Russia doesn't have sea access. That's really important. Russia does not have sea access. And Peter the Great understands that any powerful country needs access to the sea. So the closest sea up north is the Baltic Sea. And at this moment in time, it's owned by the Swedes. And so he needs to kind of steal it from, not steal it, but what's the word, you know, fight for it and get it via wars. Granted, the Swedes didn't really, you know, they, so we're going to talk about what St. Peter's was, St. Petersburg looked like before St. Peter, or before Peter the Great turned it into a, an amazing city. So there's Peter the Great standing on the shore of the Baltic Sea, looking out. Um, so an interesting thing to understand this poem, this story, it's really about this guy and kind of what happens in, in St. Petersburg when it floods. And back in this time, St. Petersburg flooded a lot because it was built sort of against nature. It was built uh, on a swamp. And so it was very prone to flooding. And so St. Petersburg would off, often flood. And in fact, that's the story in Yednev Sadnik. Um, you know, the city floods, it kills this guy's wife and he gets mad. So he comes up to that statue of, of the bronze horseman, gives it the fig and says, like, you know, it's a kind of a, like, our damn you, Peter the Great. And the Peter the Great statue comes to life and chases after him. So the moral of the story is don't, don't mess with Peter the Great. Right? Don't don't <laughs> don't think you're better than Saint Petersburg. Don't think you're better than Peter the Great. Um, so this whole poem is very much the juxtaposition of of Peter and also Saint Petersburg's power, but also that it can turn on you. Right? It can flood Saint Petersburg. It's on the one hand very beautiful, but it's also kind of dangerous. Um, thank you, Serge. 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 I actually was born in the United States. In the city American Fork, Utah. So I don't have any Russian relatives, unfortunately. I am an American. My ancestors are from Sweden and Denmark. So no Russian blood. You can find more information about that on my YouTube channel. Um, so he, so we're talking about St. Petersburg, right? On the one hand, it's very impressive. On the other hand, it's very oppressive. Okay, and same thing with Peter himself. He's very impressive, but he was also very oppressive. He was he was very threatening. Um, so there you can see a picture of St. Petersburg flooding, like I said, as it did very often back in those days before they got a lot of the canal systems going. Okay, oh, and I'm sorry this, this font got messed up, but we're gonna just read this real quick. We're not gonna do an in-depth gra grammar analysis, but I say that if you wanna understand Russia, especially Russian foreign policy, this is quite possibly one of your most important moments from literature that will help you understand Russia's approach to world politics, to geopolitics, to foreign policy. Okay, so there he is, Peter the Great standing. And he says, И думал он, от сель грозить мы будем шведу. Здесь будет город заложен на зло надменному соседу. Природа здесь нам суждено в Европу прорубить окно. Ногою твердой стать при море сюда по новым им волнам. Все флаги в гости будут к нам и заперуем на просторе. Okay, so let's go through and translate this um, really quick. No, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I have no... <laughs> No connections with Russian whatsoever in my DNA chart and my genealogy. Everybody's from England, Sweden, Denmark. And actually, that's a video I want to do in the future is my DNA test that will show the map of where all of my ancestors are from. Um, okay, so this is what he says. And again, this is why it's very under you can understand a lot about Russian foreign policy if you uh, like kind of from reading this this thing here. Um, so he says, from here, we're going to threaten our Swede, the Swedes, their neighbor. And here we're going to found a city just to spite our conceited neighbor, which are the Swedes at that point in history. Nature here is meant for us. So like we are, we are destined by this nature. It's meant to be ours. 
And we're going to cut prarubits, is like to chop through a window to Europe. We want to have access to Europe, but we're going to stand with a firm leg by the sea, meaning we're going to be a naval force. We are going to be a strong force. Um, and Suda Panov in Valnam, and two here to come visit us, all the flags are going to come visit us. So meaning all the countries of Europe are going to come to us here in, in St. Petersburg via the Baltic Sea. So that literally means like we're going we're gonna to feast on the expanse, meaning it's trying to say we're going to show everybody a good time. We're going to show them a good time. So I'm going to take a minute to answer some of Sergi's questions. Yes, I lived in Russia one time from in 2003 for about four months. And then again, I went back for another academic year and studied at MGU for, and that was from 2004 to 2005. And then I've been back a few other times just as a tourist after that. So those are to answer some of these questions. So again, that you can see at this point in history, Russia really wants to be more closely associated with Europe. That's changing in recent years, but starting from the time of Peter the Great up until this, this new pivot towards China that's happening, Russia wanted to be considered a partner with all of Europe. And Peter the Great made that possible. He very much um, wanted to learn all of their engineering, all of their art. And that's why St. Petersburg as a city looks so European. You'd never know you weren't in Paris. You'd never know you're not in Vienna as you walk around St. Petersburg. Okay, so just to depict some of these moments in the poem we're going to analyze, the grammar, here are some key things about St. Petersburg. So this big river that often flooded, that ran through the city of St. Petersburg, is called the Neva River. There it is, right there. And then, so here's a line from the poem we're gonna analyze today. Nevoi derjavne tichenye. So he's saying the mighty flow of the Neva, there it is, and you can see it's, it's pretty intense. The mighty flow, okay? And then all along the, the waterfront on the river are kind of these granite walls that often would flood. And then there's like little stairs that go down into the river that you could access, but it's all built of granite and it's really beautiful. And then this next line from the poem is Tvaich agrad uzor chuguni. So this is it's important. Here's a depiction of what that means. Uzor is like this pattern. So th there are gates all around St. Petersburg that are made of cast iron. So that's what this word means. Chuguni. So there's um, that's the cast iron designs of the gates that are everywhere. Okay, so I think now that we um, now that we have kind of talked about that. Okay, and everybody can read in the comments because I'm hoping that some people that are from Russia as well will, you know, add extra information. So everybody be stopping and reading those comments off in the side as well because there's going to be some interesting information here. Um, and then there's one more line that we're going to talk about, and it says, Isvetla Admiral Tsiel. Oh, sorry, that got cut off there. Isvetla Admiral Tseskaya Igla. So Igla means a needle, and this is the, the steeple of this church over at the Peter and Paul Fortress that he's going to be talking about. So I just wanted to have visual representation uh, of what these things look like so that you'll understand the poem a little bit more. Also, the, a big thing for understanding this particular part of the poem that I love is understanding white nights. So white nights in Russia, because it's so far north, is, is when the, either the sun doesn't set at all or it doesn't ever really get dark. And that starts at summer solstice, which is tomorrow. So that's why I chose to do this poem today. So summer solstice, starting in May, really, you kind of lose your nighttime. And it gets really confusing. I remember when I was in Moscow, the, when I flew back to go to school, I landed in Moscow on June 21st. So I already had jet lag. I was already confused. You know, my body clock was very confused. And I remember I woke up in the middle of the night and I look at the clock, it says four. And I go outside and it's light. It looks like this outside. And I'm like, where is everybody? Why is... <laughs> 
<laughs> where is everybody? Where, where's my friend? Why is nobody awake? And then I realized it was because of the white nights, right? So it, it just wasn't really very dark outside. It was actually 4 a.m., but it wasn't very dark outside because of white nights. Привет всем. Um, thank you. Спасибо за комплименты. Uh, so we're talking about white nights. And it's very, the fur, that was just in Moscow that it was light. And the further north you go, the less light or the less darkness you have as you get north. So we're going to read my favorite part of this poem that's talking about white nights. So let's get started on the poem itself. One second. Everybody tell me where you are. I'm always interested. Somebody, Sergei is in Moscow. Write in the comments where you're located. That's always fun to see where everybody is. So here we go. Okay, so this is our little love letter to St. Petersburg, specifically St. Petersburg in the summer with White Nights. There we go. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to go read it through one time if you're learning Russian. Um, I'll, if you're learning Russian, this is where you try and read along and practice your pronunciation. And then we'll go through and we'll just first do like the direct literal translation of every single word. And then we're going to do the grammar behind it. This is a very... Привет. I'm actually, я еду, кстати, в Калифорнию на следующей неделе. So I'm going to San Diego next week to visit my parents. Um, so this is extremely complex grammar. So that's why we're going to break it down. I took a poetry class in college and it was life changing because the, the professor went through and explained Pushkin poetry like I'm going to do for you today in this stream. So here we go. Let's enjoy this. So we'll go through first and then we're just going to go th through word by word and translate it. I will. I'm very open to other ideas for how to translate certain words because there are certain words I'm really I don't know how to translate very well. Okay, here we go. Um, let me make this a little bit better. One second. Okay, so поехали. Окей, okay. люблю тебя, Петра Творение, люблю твой строгий, стройный вид, невыдержавное течение. Notice there's a rhythm. This is iambic pentameter. It has a nice rhythm, a nice bounce to it. And that's really great for learning a new language because you know where the word stress should be because there's because you have to keep the rhythm, right? Okay, so here we go. Word for word. Already start anticipating it in your mind. How you how are you? Going to uh, translate these words. Okay. I love you. Peter. Remember, we're not we're not doing any grammar just now. We're, we're going, what does this word mean? What does this word mean? That was a bad marker. Creation. I love your uh, stern. And this is where I need help. Stroyni. Stroyni. Oh, somebody asked me, have I noticed? Почувствовали ли вы увлечение спроса на изучение русского в последнее время? I don't know. I mean, yes, I always have people that are interested. And I've got a lot of... Um, people around here in Washington, D.C., obviously, that want to learn Russian. But people always want to learn Russian, I think. As far as, you know, некоторым я отвечу на русском, потому что вопрос был на русском. Я слышала, что у многих ютуберов, например, были какие-то там, я не знаю, называется хейт, да? То есть и люди, они... они Они, от, они отписались, например, от их каналов, потому что это русский язык. То есть это cancel culture, right? So, но я не вижу в этом смысл, зачем cancel целую культуру. Для меня это не, не, я не понимаю, потому что а, это не, 
я, я просто не, я не понимаю вот этот менталитет. То есть, да, я заметила увлечение, интереса в русский язык, но поймите, что я живу в Вашингтоне, и поэтому вы, вы можете понять, зачем люди здесь интересуются русским языком. Но я думаю, что теперь... Люди хотят лучше понимать Россию, настоящую Россию, и хотят понимать, что там на самом деле происходит, и не только то, что показывают нам на новостях. То есть они, если они будут учить русский, то есть у них лучшие шансы понять культуру, понимать культуру. То есть я надеюсь, что я ответила на вопрос. Вот. Окей, хорошо. И, кстати, на следующей неделе... У нас будет, я буду на отдыхе, но я все равно буду делать видео, и это будет Q&A, вопросы и ответы. Вы можете задать мне любой вопрос о моей жизни, о, о себе и так далее. Это на следующей неделе. Я покажу вам дом моих родителей на юге, штата Юты, и я думаю, что вам будет интересно. Окей, okay, помогите. Как перевести это слово? Я не знаю. How, do you, how would you translate this word? Стройный... Like, if you said this about a girl, стройная, она стройная, that means she has a good body. She's got a good body, right? So that's why I don't know how I would... <laughs> like you can't say that St. Petersburg has a good body, right? Oh, graceful, I think you're trying to say, right? Because that's not a word in English. Gra gra gracile, that's not a word in English. I think you're meaning graceful, yeah? Da? So I do like that. All of, I approve of, of graceful. Let's do graceful. But yeah, in, in today's speech, стройный, стройная means a person that has a good body, essentially. Like they, they work out, they take good care of themselves, they look good. Vid is another one I need help with. I like your graceful view, like your graceful... Um, You're graceful. I don't know how to say how, how I would say, it, but maybe view unless somebody comes back and helps me come up with something like the way you look. But I don't know how to say it in English because I'm not a good translator. Okay, the Neva River. Remember, I showed you a picture of that big river that runs through the middle of Saint Petersburg, and that's if you've read Russian literature, you need to know what the Neva is. Remember, there's the girl that throws herself um, in Crime and Punishment. A girl just like kills herself by jumping into the, the Neva River. This is all over in Russian literature. Nevsky Prospect. You got to know what the Neva is. Dervnaye, Dervnaye. I would say mighty or maybe powerful. And then Tichenia means current and or flow. That's not there. Okay, so now this is where grammar is going to play a key role, and I'm warning you, it's going to be brutal. For you Russians learning English, it's going to be good practice for apostrophe S, right? For you English speakers learning Russian, this is going to be good for identifying the genitive case, those invisible of words, okay? So I love you, Petra. Who do, do they love Peter? Or who do they love? Come on, interact with me a little. Are they saying, I love you, Peter? What are they saying? Hello, Sajad, welcome back. So they're not saying, I love you, Peter, although that would work if we took out the, if, if we didn't have this word, that would work. Like saying, I love you, Peter, fine, that works. But we're actually saying here, I love you, creation of Peter. I love you, creation of Peter, because this, the original of this is Piotr, and this is getting genitive case. So we're actually saying in this sentence, I love you, creation of Peter, or to sound more natural in English, we'd say Peter's apostrophe S. I love you, Peter's creation, right? So apostrophe S. Genitive case is how you create an apostrophe S in Russian, okay? So if you wanted to say, like, friend of Peter, this is Peter's friend. You'd say, это друг Петра, right? This is Peter's sister, это сестра Петра. 
And uh, good. Okay, so next. Люблю твой строгий, стройный вид. Okay, so I've been telling people we only change things in, into the accusative if it's feminine singular and it's not animate or it's it's not or or it's animate sorry i got confused there for a second or it's animate so vid is masculine so we don't need to change anything in this sentence lublu is the ya conjugation of lubit and then everything here is just in the nominative regular original form because it's not feminine singular and it's not animate. Okay, here we go. The original of this was nieva. Okay, nieva, but it's getting genitive case here. Why? Why do we think? Maybe there's an apostrophe S. Okay, there's, there's a little invisible of here that we know is there because this just got put into genitive case. So the original of this was nieva. And then the mighty flow. This is actually the subject of the sentence or like this is the thing you love. I love the mighty flow of the nieva. And this is going to happen all throughout the poem is words are going to be flipped. And that's why you learn Russian, everyone. Вот почему надо учить русский? Чтобы лучше ценить русские стихи на оригинальном языке. To better, to better appreciate Russian poetry in the original, um, in the original language. Good. So I'm seeing some questions here. What Peter created? Oh yeah, you could you could translate that. I love you. What Peter created? It sounds a little weird in English, because Tvarinya is very much like a a creation. Um, let's see, and then. Uh, Joseph, you said the city, but I'm not sure what you're referring to. Yes, vid is very much appearance. However, um, it doesn't sound very poetic, right? That sounds weird. And it, like, I mean, view sounds weird too. So it's just appearance sounds weird. Um, so I don't know what the Navy, are we talking about Peter the Greater? You're going to have to be more specific what you're talking about. Yes, so good, Christy. Notice, you probably thought that was plural, but that makes zero sense. Like, that wouldn't be a, a full sentence if that was a plural of the nevas. So we want, we're, and this is going to happen again, Christy, I want you paying close attention. There's going to happen where you think it's a plural, but no, it's genitive. It's genitive. There's lots of genitive, um, uh, lots of genitive in weird places in this poem. Okay? Uh, so the, the nevas... The mighty flow of the nieva, of the nieva. That's why that ah went to an e because there's an invisible of, which is what makes us need genitive case. Okay, get ready for those weird, weird genitive cases here. There's going to be a bunch more. Berigavoy yo granit. Okay, so berik. Anybody know what berik? How would we translate that? We're going to go through word for word. In fact, I don't even know how to translate that word. Like her coast? No, like what is that called when you're up against the water? Um, oh, geez. Her granite. Okay, English speakers, this is hard for you. Who is she? Who are we talking to? Who are we talking about? Oh, thank you, shore. Yes, <laughs> that sounds so much better. Shore. Shoreline. And since it's an adjective, I'm going to say shoreline. Why are we suddenly getting this word her? Uh, thank you, Benjamin. Молодец. Очень хорошо. Умничка. So her is referring to the nieva because the nieva is a female. It's a female. It's a she. So the nieva's granite shoreline. Again, remember I showed you those pictures. All the walls all along the nieva are made of granite. And they're actually really beautiful. Okay. Uh, now let's go through word for word. Your, I'm not going to break down the grammar yet. Fences. Pattern. <laughs> so, so primitive. Cast iron. Like a skillet, for example. You could have a chuguna uh, skavarotka, for example. Your. Pensive. Knights. 
Okay, get ready for some crazy genitive and or apostrophe S and or apostrophe S. For those of you who are learning English, where are you going to put apostrophe S's in here? Let's get ready for the grammar. Okay, so Birigavoy <clears throat> granit. Nothing really is happening here grammatically. Nothing's very weird or special here. However, we get down here and this is getting crazy. We are suddenly getting, we are suddenly getting genitive plural. This one, the original of this was agrada and we're getting genitive plural again. Why? This is so random. And then these two are the original. Same, same. So these are a nominative, so they didn't change. Nominative didn't change. So this is where you need to know Russian grammar in order to understand these lines. In English, this would be so confusing because we need word order. Your fences, your fences pattern cast iron, what? That doesn't make any sense in English. However, if we flip this and we go, the cast iron patterns of your fences. The cast iron patterns of your fences. There is a an invisible of right here that we're not seeing. The cast iron pattern of your fences, which is why if we if we know in our minds that there's a, a of in there, because remember in Russian, there is no word for of. There is no word for of. Look it up. I dare you right now. Look it up in a dictionary of what is the word for of? It's not there. There's no word for of to show possession. OK, so the cast iron pattern of your fences. Um, I, the same thing is going to happen here. And it doesn't make sense until we add this one onto it. So I'm going to actually do these two together real fast. Hopefully you can see both. Okay, let me add on this one. Prezrachne, help me translate that one. I'm going to say transparent for now, but I there I am. <clears throat> I feel like there could be something better. Sumrak. Sumrak is uh what's that called you know the uh oh good go away. oh good yeah waterside seaside that's good how do we how do we translate sumrak you know twilight twilight that's what it is I, I knew that that's what it's the the book you know the stephanie meyer's book in russian i think it's called sumerki or sumrak or something like that um, okay, so transparent, twilight, glow. You can uh, disagree with me if you don't like glow for blesk. Bies, what does bies mean? Without. <laughs> of course, Dracula's would uh, know twilight. Uh, bies lunli, what is the luna? Luna is the moon, and bies means without. So moonless. I don't even know if that's a word in English, but moonless, okay? So now, твоих задумчивых ночей прозрачный сумрак сумрак блеск без луны. Okay, here we go. There is a genitive case. Ooh, majesty, grandeur instead of mighty and such. Yes, all of those are very good words describing Saint Petersburg. We want that. Yes, sight. Yeah, I do like I like sight on there. Oh, and by the way, I had a viewer suggest that after I do these live streams that I put the text on my community tab on YouTube and let everybody discuss it. So I will put that up there today and we'll have, and I'll highlight the words that were difficult to translate. And then we can all work together on my community tab. Okay, so here we go, guys. Find the invisible of in these two lines. Find it. Where is it? So that, to find the invisible of, you need to know genitive case. Where is the of here? Okay. So if we were doing this in English, to make it sound good in English, we actually need to flip them. They need to be opposite. So we would go in English to make this sound good. The transparent twilight, your moonless glow, or so the transparent twilight, the moonless glow, because in English, our adjectives need to be before the noun. You can't really say 
globe moonless. It, that doesn't sound good in English. So the transparent twilight, the moonless glow, find the of. Where's the of? Christy, I'm calling on you. You're my student. Where is of? Of your pensive nights. Here is the invisible of, which explains why we just got genitive case here. Okay, of, Tvayi was the original. Zadum, Chivuyi, and then the original of nights is Nochi. Okay, but because we're saying of your pensive nights, we're getting genitive plural. Tvayich zadum chivuch nachi. <clears throat> okay, and then so I I love the transparent twilight, the moonless glow of your pensive nights. Okay, now we're getting to my favorite part that's going to be about white nights that we talked about. Remember where the sun doesn't really set and it just never gets dark? Right, Christy, isn't that brutal? That's why it's so fun to have somebody break this down for you and explain why it's happening like this. Okay, it's going to get a little easier. I'm going to tell you, it's going to get a little easier now. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, my voice. Mm. Okay, here we go. Когда я в комнате моей пишу, читаю без лампады. Okay, here we go. Word for word. Start thinking of it in your head and then see if we guess the same things. Когда. When. I. In. Room. My. I write. I read. Without a lamp. Okay? So here, grammar is pretty straightforward. You should be able to understand this if you're a first-year Russian student. <clears throat> when, so here, v in this case is going to need prepositional case. Original here was komnata. And we know that when you're saying in a room, it gets prepositional case. And it's a singular. The original of maye was maya. And it's just getting prepositional case here. Okay. I read. The original of this verb was pisas. And this is just the ya conjugation. Chitayu original was chitats. And we're getting the ya conjugation. Without, and then start thinking, what case does without force? What case are you going to get if you have the word without? You are going to get genitive. And the original was with an a on the end. Lampada. Okay. So when, I, when in my room I write and read without a lamp, all made possible because it never gets dark, right? So he's, he's loving that about St. Petersburg. So here we go, word for word. And bright. Or actually, I, I like clear, clear here. Sleeping. This is an active participle. Gramadi. I would love help translating this one. Gramadi. What do you think? Gramadi. Thoughtful is a nice one for instead of pensive as well. Pensive is a little bit more poetic in English. Thoughtful, we say more about gifts, right? You wouldn't look at a person who's going like this and think, oh, they're so thoughtful. No, you would say, oh, they're very pensive. They're thinking about something. Thoughtful is a person who really cares, like um, Chutsky. Like he's very, he knows what you like. So thoughtful is more a person who gives good gifts or, you know, really likes to help people and stuff like that. Um, so here we go. Gramadi. This is where I'm, this is one I'm going to highlight and ask for help translating. Um, so, oh, are you, Tuamas, are you Finnish? Because yeah, it doesn't speak very nicely of the Finnish people in this poem. <laughs> Um, yeah, sumrak, dusk, very good. Um, so gramadi, I'm not seeing any translations for it, so I will just translate what I have looked up in a dictionary. Masses. And the sleeping masses, communities, okay. Pustinnych ulitz. Okay, pustinya 
is a pustinha is a desert. In fact, if you guys come to my live stream next week, I will be in the desert. It's really beautiful. So I'll show you where I'm located. So desert, but in this case, it is an adjective, which means deserted. Streets. And light. I don't even, the Admiral, which only makes sense if you just know what that, that thing in St. Petersburg looks like. Needle. It's the steeple of this church. I could share it real fast. Here it is. This. It's on the church that's on the Peter and Paul Fortress in St. Petersburg. Okay. So. Let's do the grammar. Yes, Lee. The original of this was the adjective yasni. Yes, and this is a short form adjective. And it's plural because it's describing the gramadi. Um, do you guys see see if you can look at this? What is the original verb that this adjective was formed from? Pretty easy. This comes from spots, right? And it's turned into uh, an adjective, which makes it a participle, is what that's called. Gramadi, that one didn't change. Pustinich, look right here. This this ich ending, and then this zero ending. The fact that there's nothing on the end of the next word tells us we're getting genitive case, and it's an adjective. The original was pustinie. And we're getting genitive plural because there's an advens there's an invisible of an invisible of okay so let's see because we're saying of the deserted streets of the deserted streets Sivetli is the original and this is a short form adjective you see a lot of short form adjectives in poetry by the way because it's a more poetic form and it's a feminine. Okay, Admiratilska Igla is a feminine. Nothing's really happening there. Okay, so let's translate this. And the sleeping masses are clear. Um, oh, the, sleep, the sleeping masses of the deserted streets are clear. And the Admiral steeple in English is, is light. And here we go. This is my, one of my most favorite lines of all of Pushkin's poetry of all time. Okay, here we're getting really complicated grammar. So here we go. Stick with me. We're almost done. E, and, not, allow, dark, darkness, night, <laughs> nighttime, nighttime darkness, to, or onto, sounds better, golden, Skies, um, one dawn. Uh, this is hard. Okay, uh, Smyanit, any suggestions? Any suggestions on Smyanit? It's like to switch out, to switch out maybe? That's not poetic at all. So I'm going to hope somebody comes here with a poetic word for to switch. Smyanit, switch out. Other hurries having given <laughs> night half an hour. Wow, fancy, fancy grammar here. Get ready, get ready. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Nyepuskaya. This is what's called an active adverb. Active adverb, meaning doing what? In English, we would translate these active adverbs as I-N-G, okay? So this comes from the verb puskat. So, and not allowing, not allowing, puskat. And you get, you get these verbs by taking off this ending and adding an I, ya, uh, or you take off the the ani ending technically it's it's very complex but i can answer questions if you have them in the community when they when we put that up you can ask your more uh, more questions about the grammar the original of this word was tma what a weird word right tma 
and we're doing something to it. We're allowing it. So therefore, it's getting accusative case. And this is the adjective describing the darkness. So it's also getting accusative case, right? So, and not allowing the nighttime darkness, na is going to get accusative, but guess what? It's not feminine singular like this one was. So it doesn't change. Okay, who knows what was the original? This is the plural. This is an irregular plural. The singular is different. Ooh, exchange, I like that. What is the singular of um, nebisa? Nebisa. Ooh, replace. Yes, yes, thank you, Benjamin. Maladiat, spasiba. That's my favorite. Replace, plotted pant said that too. So nebisa is an irregular plural. What was the singular? Who knows? So we're getting Zalatoy was the original here. Hurry. Yay, Christy, good job. And the original of this was Nyeba. It's an irregular plural. Nyeba becomes Nyebisa. Same thing with Chuda. Chudisa. There's some weird plurals like that in the Russian language. Okay. So, and not allowing the nighttime darkness onto the golden skies. Okay. And again, these didn't change because we're getting accusative case and they're not feminine singular. This is an irregular plural. It's not a feminine. Admazardia. Did you know that the number one also gets gen genders? Adin, adna, adno, adni. Abaldiet, da? Um, okay, so adna zarya. So because zarya is feminine, the adin has to agree with it. It has to be, also be a feminine. Sminit. Okay, this is what's tricky, is... This verb didn't conjugate, right? Because we are actually going to insert this verb right in there, in which case it makes sense to have this be in an infinitive. So one dawn hurries to replace, I'm much more like that, to replace another. Dav comes from the verb that, and this is a past tense verbal adverb which again, if you have more in-depth questions about these, you can ask them in our little community post that we're going to do. Having given dav to the night. So we're getting dative case here because you're giving something to the night. Oh, blin. Noch is the original. And here it's in the dative case. So, so one dawn hurries to replace another having given the nighttime only half an hour. So if you have ever, I, I just, it, this doesn't sound good in English, but if you've ever seen these white nights, you can understand how beautiful this line of the poem is. So we're gonna read it one more time. I'm gonna try and make it sound pretty in English, but please learn Russian so that you can appreciate how amazing this is. Okay, here we go. So, and not allowing the nighttime darkness into the golden skies. Let's look at the picture, what these skies look like. Guys, this picture right here is probably like 2 a.m. That's what it looks like all night, right? It doesn't get dark for very long. It just doesn't. So it, uh, that's what it would look like at maybe 2 or 3 in the morning. Okay, so there we go. So... So not, and not allowing the nighttime darkness into the golden skies, one dawn hurries to replace another, having only given nighttime half an hour. That's it. That's all the nighttime was allowed to hang around was a half hour. Okay. So that's a very, very, very complex grammar. If you can read this in Pushkin, you know you're good in Russian. If you can read this and understand what belongs to who, where are those invisible ofs? If you can appreciate this in Russian, your Russian is very, very good. Если вы учите английский, я желаю вам удачи, большой удачи, чтобы перевести это на английский, чтобы звучало красиво, потому что английский язык не такой гибкий, как русский. So this is why Russian is so amazing, is you can just 
move those words all around. No, nobody cares about word order whatsoever. Nobody cares. Um, so that's going to be all for today. Again, next week is 4th of July. It's our American holiday. I will be in Utah in my parents' house at the Pustinia. It's in the desert. It's very beautiful. I'm going to show up and be ready to do a live stream. You can ask me any question except about politics and sex, obviously. And uh, I will answer. Yes, if you give me, if если вы задите мне вопрос по-русски, я отвечу по-русски. If you ask me a question in English, I'll answer in English. If you ask me a question in Russian, I'll answer in Russian. You can be any question, grammar, about my kids, about my life, about my opinions of Joe Biden. Oh, wait, no, that's politics. Never mind. Anything in the whole wide world. But I will be, if, if nobody shows up, I'm going to be live just showing you around my parents' house and showing you the nature everything like that. So check out the community tab. I'll be putting these specific lines from the poem up and we can discuss it. Any other moments, uh, I'll highlight the things that we had a hard time translating and we can comment down below. Also, you know, do you agree with me that this line um, is one of the most important things for understanding Russia's approach to foreign policy? That's, that's my belief is that if you want to understand Russian foreign policy, at least up until recent years, you should know this line from Pushkin. Oh, George, save it for next week. Come back next week for the Q&A questions and answers next week. Хорошо? Увидимся на следующей неделе. Это все. Увидимся на следующей неделе. That's all. I'll see you guys all next week for the live stream Q&A. And then check back to the community tab for our, and we can continue our discussion of this poem there. Okay? Хорошо, это все, до свидания.